uh, welcome back friends welcome to another video lecture by kami biology in this video lecture we are going to talk about uh, bacterial endospores okay this is another video lecture which is also regarded to the cell biology okay now what is bacterial endospore bacterial endospores these are the layers which are usually present after the cell wall now if, uh, let's suppose this is the cell membrane this blue one let's suppose the cell membrane and this is the cell wall after the cell wall what we have we have each of the layers as you are watching now these layer are called what these layer are called the endospores bacterial endospores okay uh, each layer is usually responsible to protect the bacteria from harmful substance for example each layer are responsible to protect the bacteria from heat to protect the bacteria from uh, uv radiation uh, ultraviolet radiation we can say also and uh, gamma radiation chemical disinfection and some other harmful substance due to which the bacteria may be killed okay and uh, moreover this you know endospores uh, you know we can see it with the help of light microscope and electron microscope as well but for their visualization for their uh, uh, you know for their structure study we should have to stain this endospore with the help of uh, methylene blue stain and some other spore stain as well now one thing more each layers are impermeable to some of the stain so we usually use methylene blue stain what we use we use a methylene blue stain so we use uh, this one stain uh, you know to visualize the structure of the uh, bacterial endospore so we can also see it with the help of electron microscope as well but whenever you want to see it with the light microscope you should have to stain it with methylene blue okay after that you know bacterial endospores are very strong it is very strong and it can protect the bacteria from everywhere let's suppose uh, inside food or inside milk or any food item we have this endospores uh, bacteria are present when we heat the food items so still this endospores will be survived then this is a question arise when we you know and when we heat is until when we when we increase the heat for one hour still the bacteria will survive then there will a questions arise in our mind then how we can kill such uh, types of bacteria you know, endospores bacteria we can easily kill it uh, with the help of autoclave okay autoclave is a kind of machine due to which heat and moisture are present due to heat and moisture and high temperature such bacteria will be killed what actually happen we can you know uh, put our uh, sometimes we can put our sample sometimes we can put the instrument or the food sample or we can put any kinds of the sample but specially we can put the uh, means materials which we need for example such surgical materials we can put uh, uh, instrument we can put the media okay now what actually happen once we put it then we uh, means uh, start the machine after starting the machine we increase the temperature almost 120 centigrade at that temperature we also increase the time as well for one and a half one and a half hour when we increase the time at one and a half hour then at that time the uh, you know endospore bacteria will also kill so we can kill the endospores bacteria due to this mechanisms okay uh, one thing more about the bacteria endospore when have when the bacteria have endospores so it is very dangerous bacteria or we can say it is danger pathogenic bacteria okay so endospores you know it can also improve the pathogenicity of the bacteria as well now moreover these endospores are usually present in case of gram positive bacteria or we can say some vegetative cells for example we have bacteria bacillus clostridium or we have another bacteria you know sporosarcina sporosarcina bacteria have also this endospores as well but not only these bacteria we have some other bacteria as well but these are so common bacteria okay and uh, you know uh, whenever we talked about uh, some other uh, you know whenever we talked about some other endospore characteristics so, so in some of the cell means in case of the mother cells these are what these are the mother cells mother cells or we can say parent cells those cells which are ready to divide which can produce the daughter cells in this case what what actually happen in this case the endospores have no specific position as you are watching these black circles are what these are the endospores sometimes the endospores are present at the center then we, we, we call that what central endospore sometimes the endospores are present at one terminal end of the cell 
means sometime at that area or sometime at that area at terminal point then we call that terminal endospore and sometimes the endospore are present you know it is look like that uh, the endospores are engulfed or swollen then we call that swollen spores so sometime in case of the mother cell the endospores are present uh, you know a little bit before the terminal point now this is the terminal point so it is a little bit before the terminal point then we call that subterminal endospores okay now these are what these are the endospore position inside the mother cells then let's talk about uh, the each layers in a detail so the first layer we have what we have this uh, exosporium exosporium is the most outer layer of the spores that are usually present you know they can cover whole of the cell as well or we can say they can cover all of the uh, sp uh, you know uh, layers of the spores so this layer of the sp endospores we can say is thin delicate and they can easily you know uh, rupture as well this is the first layer the second layer we have spore coat okay what we have we have this one second we call that spore coat spore coat is present beneath the exosporium and spore coat is a strong freely thick and you know it is impermeable to some of the chemical toxin or we can say some of the heat uh, heat as well so we can say due to this layer the bacteria are heat resistant we can say that it is you know uh, resists their cell from the chemical toxin as well moreover this pore coat is also they contain a dna uh, repair enzymes or this pore coat is made up of what this pore coat is made up of special kinds of the proteins we can say you know due to uh, whenever the germination process are done so germination process are also possible by this pore coat as well they are specially used to activate the cell as well so what actually happen whenever the germination process are completed due to this spore coat then sometime you know what actually happen inside the cell uh, bacterial cell the dna are uh, start degrading but whenever they have this spore coat the spore coat are responsible to repair this dna again okay so that's why it is very important the third we have another uh, layer third we have we call that usually what we call that cortex now cortex is the third layer of the bacterial endospore so this cortex you know it is made up of peptidoglycan layer and it is uh, usually present beneath the spore coat okay cortex are uh, you know it is responsible to remove the water from the cell or we can say it is responsible to uh, you know for in in, in the dehydration process whenever cortex uh, responsible for this purpose then it is you know such bacteria are resistance to heat and moreover this cortex can occupy the whole sp spore volume as well it is very thick and it is can occupy the whole cell volume uh, one thing more after that we have another layer we call that what we call that core wall or spore cell wall why we call that core wall or spore cell wall you know we have some kinds of bacteria which don't have the cell wall uh when uh, for example my we call that uh, mycoplasma bacteria yes mycoplasma bacteria don't have the cell wall then what actually happen they have this uh, core wall so core wall is acting as a cell wall it is also uh, you know cross linked with the cell wall as well and it is also made up of the peptidoglycan layer as well and we also call that what spore cell wall its structure is similar to uh, nucleoid or we can say similar to ribosomes but it is usually inactive um, it is metabolically inactive okay after that then we have another uh, questions usually arise in our mind that how these spores are so strong or we can say these layers uh, that which kind of molecules are present uh, in each of the layers you know we have a molecule we usually call that what we usually call that dip dipyclonic acid dipyclonic acid is actually a molecule or acid which are usually present at the cortex area it is present 15 percent okay this uh, you know dipyclonic acid are usually present in the core means at that core wall so it is usually present at the core wall when a bacteria have this uh, dipyclonic acid so then each of the bacteria are resistance to dry uh, uh, you know dry heat and wet heat and some oxidizing agent as well 
Sometimes it is made up of calcium. What? It is made up of calcium. Then we call it calcium dipoclonate uh, dipo, uh, acid. Then we call that what? We call that dipo, uh, clonate, uh, calcium dipoclonate acid. Okay. When the cell have such uh, uh, calcium dipoclonate acid, so then it is, uh, you know, protect the cell from dry heat, wet heat and oxidizing agent as well. Okay. Sometimes this uh, endospore is, uh, you know, made up of uh, small pieces or small uh, acid soluble DNA proteins. Let me write uh, small, small acid DNA binding proteins. Okay. Sometimes these uh, layers are made up of what? Small acid DNA binding proteins. It is a kinds of proteins uh, which are usually, you know, saturate the DNA. Okay, one thing that I forget to mention about the dipoclonate acid, uh, uh, sorry, calcium dipoclonate acid. It is usually responsible to stabilize the nucleic acid as well. Then after that, we have another, uh, you know, protein molecules are comes which are usually present in the endospores. We usually call that uh, small acid DNA binding proteins. Such molecules you know uh, proteins we can say it is responsible to saturate the dna parts saturated then it can protect the cell from heat uh, you know uh, uh, radiations and we can say disinfection chemical disinfection and also chemical disinfection as well uh, let me tell you about uh, another uh, main point about the cortex which is that uh, you know cortex uh, layer is usually responsible to remove the water or we can say to remove the water molecules uh, 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 which are present inside the cell uh, or they are usually involved in the dehydration process. Once they remove the water or once they completed the dehydration process then such cell will be protected from what such cell will be protected from uh, you know heat and uh, some other some other radiations as well now one thing more about this uh, uh, spore code is that uh, this spore code is also uh, you know responsible uh, for uh, protect the cell from different kinds of the enzymes means those enzymes which can kill the cell when the cell have spore code, so it will be protected from such enzyme. Not only that, this spore code is also responsible to protect the cell from chemical uh, like uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide as well. Okay, so we can say in summary, in summary, what we can say, this endospore, oh, okay, one thing more that I uh, must tell you that's very important. The endospore are not always present in a bacterial cell. Bacteria can make the endospore on that time when there is a shortage of food or nutrients or we can say moisture as well then the endospores will be formed okay guys okay so that's all about what that's all about the bacterial endospore inshallah in the next video lecture we are going to talk about the how the endospores are formed means endospores formation and we are we can also call that baseless bacterium megatherium okay so please stay tuned and continue to watch the video Thank you so much.